Ethan Pierce here with the French Tech News at CES Las Vegas. Super excited to have a conversation and, and very honored that he took the time to spend a little bit of time with us here with the ambassador um, of France to the United States, uh, Philippe Etienne. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me a little bit of your very precious time at CES. Uh, uh, lots of stuff going on. You just uh, was the opening of CES uh, with Gary Shapiro that you were at. And uh, now we have, we just had the French Tech Breakfast where we talked a little bit about some of the, the reasons that French Tech is amazing right now and, and really cool things going on. So I just wanted to hit a few points uh, to have your perspective, maybe more on the diplomatic side of things and not, you know, we have all the wonderful entrepreneurs and things like the French Tech where we talk about um, uh, the, the visa or you know, what's going on with, with fundraising or job creation, all these things from that perspective. But I, I thought it would be really great to have uh, also this other kind of high level um, view of how that works, especially with your history with European affairs being a, uh, in, in terms of the, e, the European Commission or, or the, you know, an advisor to the president and all these different things where there's been a lot of hats there that give us some really inter interesting perspective. So I wanted to just kind of have your views on that. And maybe we can just start with um, your thoughts on the opportunity for uh, French entrepreneurs uh, in the United States, uh, thanks to things like CES, but also just in general. Well, thank you first for having me and for giving me this opportunity. It's really important for me as ambassador of France to the US to be here in Las Vegas for this uh, CES. And indeed, it's uh, one of our priorities nationally to to develop our um, entrepreneurship um, through uh, a very vibrant uh, startup scene. France is now a startup nation, mm -hmm. is well established as a startup nation. And to be here in, uh, in Las Vegas is uh, absolutely essential for our companies, obviously, to, to showcase their innovations, but also to find partnership part partners and, um, and, and, and clients. It's also important for me as ambassador and for us as a country. Um, first, we want to uh, illustrate how France is um, moving forward and um, is a country of innovation. Um, uh, also, a very um, hospitable country for foreign investment. France was uh, in 2019 and again in 2020 the first European nation for the amount of foreign direct investments, mm. which especially from the US, but not only. And this is the other dimension, actually, um, uh, with um, showcasing of our innovation capacities. We want also to develop this um, uh, global exchange between France and, uh, and the US in, in both directions. Mm. France is already one of, through its companies, one of the most important uh, investors in the US uh, with uh, um, 850,000 jobs created and uh, we are, our companies are everywhere, but also our startups are here mm. in the US and they are very successful. We have uh, across the US uh, 10 uh, uh, French tech communities and I have visited many of them and I have met with a number of very brilliant and very successful uh, French entrepreneurs. And in the other direction, too, it's vital for us, as I said, to keep this uh, level we have reached first time in 2019 of uh, the first European country for hosting uh, FDI. So all these dimensions are here, uh, important for me, and I'm really excited to, to be here, uh, to have been at the opening of the CES, and uh, in, in, in the course of today and tomorrow to be able to visit uh, our, our startups and our bigger companies who are which mm. are here too. No, it's exciting, and, and you mentioned just the Francophone community in the U.S., and I think people are often surprised that, I believe San Francisco is the, is the largest French expat community after London in terms of just the amount of French people that are in the valley in San Francisco because of tech. Absolutely. And, and the French tech today is a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, obviously, in France, building companies in France, uh, but historically, a lot of those entrepreneurs five, 10, 20 years ago all came to the valley to build their companies. So there's a ton of French DNA behind a lot of American tech. Mm. And now a lot of that is bridging back and forth uh, and or, or just starting up in, in France itself. So I think that's a, it's a great point that I, I like to keep highlighting for people that it's, we're not new in France to, to innovation. Not at all. We've just been doing it here for a while and no, now we're so doing it at home. Actually, you have different situations. You have French engineers of uh, French uh, tech people who came hired uh, by U.S. companies, also big U.S. companies, in, especially in the Silicon Valley, as mm. you say. Adidas started a long time ago, but it is uh, still um, quite the case. 
you have also uh, French entrepreneurs coming to the US to create their own companies. Hmm. So French people creating US companies. And uh, finally, we have French companies and French startups coming to the US because for very good reasons, they think it is important to be in the US, to scale because of the market and because also not the size of the market, but because it is a reference yeah. to, to raise capital because um, even if we made huge progress in uh, venture capital in raising money for our startups in France, it still remains important and we are more and more um, money from abroad invested in our startups mm -hmm. when they raise money. And third, because of the talents, of course, because it's uh, the US and the US American market is a place where talents meet and extraordinary talents. So one of the other points that we can bring up then is, is the opposite now, where we're seeing American entrepreneurs, or just really actually entrepreneurs from around the world, choosing France as a destination. Uh, maybe just your thoughts on, on why that's becoming a trend. I think uh, this success comes first for uh, our traditional assets. Uh, we have a culture of engineers. Uh, we train, we have one million engineers. We have a, a big capacity and uh, more generally capacity for innovation. Also in virtual reality, um, in all the domains which are important for the future. Quant quantum technologies, for instance, or artificial intelligence are very uh, close to, well, mathematics is, uh, is very important, crucial yeah. for yeah. all those developments. And uh, France is known to be uh, really strong uh, in, uh, in mathematics, as you can see. That's actually your background as well, isn't it? Yeah, through the number of uh, yeah. field uh, medals, which yeah. is equivalent of Nobel Prize. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> but I'm not anymore a mathematician, mm -hmm. of course, but I was trained in. And this is one reason. So the traditional assets means also the infrastructures and the geographical position yeah. in the heart, at the heart of the um, uh, European Union, the Western Western European Union, but also uh, very close to Af the African continent, which is more and more dynamic. And on top of that, on top of those traditional assets, I see the effect of very successful structural reforms. Um, especially um, uh, in, in, in fields which are essential for business, mm -hmm. both to simplify the creation and the development of businesses uh, where really the government has partnered with the private sector and we have really uh, developed uh, incredibly um, efficient processes, but also in the fields of uh, very essential fields of uh, labor, labor market legislation of tax policy, uh, we see a real move uh, which uh, makes uh, France much more attractive for uh, international and especially for American investors. Mm. Um, so one last quick question. Uh, is this idea, now that we are seeing so much um, development in France and in Europe on the technology side and, and so much stuff is being built now in Europe uh, instead of in the U.S. or, or being built uh, also in Europe as well as the U.S. depending on the entrepreneurs and where they're wanting to build things, there's a very big discussion right now around European uh, tech sovereignty, uh, especially around GDPR compliance, uh, privacy by design, um, uh, competing with whether it's Huawei or, or Tencent or, or with other uh, Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud or, or Azure, these kind of things, you know, there's, there's the cloud sovereignty discussion, which is a very big one uh, right now, but just even uh, pulling back from that, just tech sovereignty in general, um, Europe is not the US, we have different legislation, different laws, and that, that means a lot of different business policies uh, for large corporations or people wanting to sell into Europe. Um, that brings a lot of questions to tech. So maybe just your thoughts on, on where we're at in this European tech sovereignty discussion. Well, if, if I can even take uh, another step back sure. and um, say a word about the idea of European sovereignty, not only tech sovereignty, but sovereignty in general. The European Union has been integrating more and more since the uh, beginning of the 1950s. And in the world as it is, we have developed uh, in France, but uh, also in Germany or in other uh, countries, this idea that to face the world as it is today uh, with its challenges, we need uh, to develop this idea of European sovereignty because we want to remain um, masters of our own destiny. And we want uh, that uh, the interests of our people 
are respected and our values, of course, also. Our middle classes, our working classes. And uh, so we, we have a, a large, um, you know, uh, we have very big assets in Europe. What I said about France is true about many other European nations. Mm. We have intellectual capacities, we have academic, we have uh, also a strong regulating, regulatory um, power. Mm. Because together we regulate and uh, the uh, general regulation of the protection of data, GDPRD is a good example for that, which, is which, which, is, which became a standard mm -hmm. beyond the European Union. And we are developing new legislations right now, the Digital Market Act, the Digital Services Act, to regulate the contents and the competition aspects. But we don't want only to be uh, considered, we, the European Union, as a regulatory power, because, as I said, we have also these uh, assets to, be, to develop also our businesses. So we, we need also to, to use these capacities, these potentials, of the European single market, this, uni this single market across the 27 member states, and these capacities of innovation to scale up our businesses, to scale up our um, um, startups across Europe. It is not at all a, a kind of protectionism. It is not at all something which is contrary to the Atlantic Alliance, to the very close cooperation with our American ally. It's a fact that um, to have a stronger, more sovereign European Union, I think, is better for everybody, mm. and for the Europeans also, but also for our American uh, allies, because for the US, it's better to have a stronger European Union. So all of this is uh, uh, politically, I mean, with a broad perspective, the idea of the European sovereignty. And of course, the dimension of this is uh, what you call the tax sovereignty. Uh, we have our own vision of tech developments. We want to remain free, open, and we are, frankly, very much. Uh, but we have also our own ideas of how we want to develop these uh, uh, opportunities, incredible opportunities given by technologies. Mm. Brilliant. Well, Ambassador Etienne, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to have a chat about some of these things. Uh, thank you for your presence uh, here as well at CES. Have a, have a great uh, couple of days at CES, and I look forward to hearing wonderful good things as well. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I look forward to those two days. Thank you for this opportunity and this exchange. Very good. Thank you again.